is our host, who's done a wonderful job at this conference, I think. Uh, Ferenc Tako is a lecturer in the Department of Japanese at Yudvush Larand University here in Budapest. His research addresses the encounters between Asian and European cultures, focusing on Max Weber and Maruyama Masao. His paper is titled Subjectivisms, Maruyama Masao, and the Debate on Shutaisei. Thank you very much. And I will share this. So, uh, welcome everyone and, uh, and thank you very much for uh, for joining the session uh, here and uh, and in online uh, format. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Professor Johnson. And um, uh, yes, uh, as it was told, my name is Ferenc Taco, uh, and the title of my presentation is Subjectivism's Maria Maso and the Debate on Should I Say. Uh, in my presentation, I will attempt to analyze uh, Maria Maso's understanding of values and value-based actions and his interpretation of historical progression uh, examining his contributions to the famous 1948 roundtable discussion on Shutaisei. By doing so, on the one hand, I would like to show uh, how Maruyama mobilized his understanding of Western philosophical views. On the other hand, from a methodological perspective, I would like to explore how the analysis of an actual discussion uh, reflects his views in contrast to the approach of other uh, intellectuals. Just very briefly, uh, on the background, uh, as it is known, Maria Maso by uh, 1948 already completed, uh, already became a central figure of, of the intellectual life of, of post-war Japan. He published important studies on Tokugawa thought between 1940 and 44. 1940 and 44, uh, and in 46, uh, the famous essay on the nature of Japanese ultranationalism, Choko Kashugina Ronri Toshinri that generated considerable debate. In the context of the present examination, I would like to stress only one characteristic that connects these writings with each other, the question of the relationship between the individual subject and the whole of society. Mariyama focuses on this problem in his first Tokugawa study on the Sorai school in terms of Sorai's separation of the public and the private spheres and in Motori Norinaga's case, on the reunification of these territories. In the ultranationalism study, the topic of the subject appears in relation to the lack of individual responsibility at all levels of society due to a value system that was entirely based on the relative proximity, as he called it, to the one central symbolic embodiment of all values, that is, the emperor. While these two fields of inquiry can easily be separated as intellectual history and political thought, as some interpreters noticed, for example, Bashe in, in 2004, it is obvious that in the Tokugawa studies, Mariyama was looking for the roots of the same democratic society he tried to contribute to and examine directly after the war. This democracy for Mariyama could only be established by and based on the unity of responsible, free individuals, and this approach intimately connects Mariyama's central topic uh, with the question of Shutaisei. The period, the period after the tragic end of the war uh, was colored in Japan by open discussions, Ronso, each centered around a certain topic with direct relevance to contemporary society. An important encounter of views was the debate on Shutaisei. This term is usually translated as subjectivity or autonomy. I will refer to it here simply as should I say. This series of discussions from 1946 onwards involved various approaches to the problem of this concept. Should I say, one could say, represented the problem of individual decision making and its relation to the whole of society in the context of the war experience. Many participants of the debate belong to different wings of Marxist thought. I think the professor's question about where the Marxists are and, and uh, where they are going to is, is also very relevant here. An important interpretation of Shutaisei was that of Uemoto Katsumi, uh, who tried to balance between contemporary Marxist theory and autonomy 
on an ethic ethical basis and was criticized from different uh, perspectives by his contemporaries. The roundtable discussion that I will focus on today uh, was titled Yui Butoshi Kant Shutaisei, Historical Materialism and Shutaisei, and was first published in the pages of Sekai in February 1948. The discussion was moderated by Yoshino Genzaburo. The participants were the philosopher Mashita Shinichi, Marxist, representing an uh, existential understanding of Marxism, the psychologist Miyagi Otoya, and the social scientist Shimizu Ikutaro, approaching social sciences from a scientific materialist perspective. Of course, these labels are very uh, dangerous uh, in, this, in this context. I will return to that uh, later. Uh, two Orthodox Marxist philosophers, Matsumura Kazuto and Kozai Yoshishige, the historian Hayashi Kentaro representing a certain objectivist perspective, and Mariyama Masao, who was supposed to advocate the so-called modernist uh, view. After its publication in Sekai, this, the text of the debate was reprinted several times in Japanese, and it was uh, exactly 40 years ago uh, this year that Viktor Koshman published his detailed introduction to the Roundtable in, in Pacific Affairs, 1982. And it has been analyzed in more or less detail several times since then. Barsha Kirsten uh, uh, provided this analysis. Here I will focus only on those elements of the quite lengthy discussion uh, that are most relevant uh, regarding Maruyama's uh, views. So I won't provide a, a full overview of this uh, text of uh, 50 pages. It was a, it was a quite extensive discussion of, of as you can see, many uh, participants. While the apropos of the roundtable was um, the publication of Uemoto's works on Shutaisei. The direct starting point uh, of the discussion was an article by James Marshall, which appeared in 1947 under the title Freud and Marx at UNESCO, uh, also published in Sekai in January uh, 1948. Marshall's argumentation is a response to a speech by the representative of Yugoslavia at a conference of UNESCO in November 1946 who took uh, issue with the UNESCO Constitution statements, uh, quote, uh, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. And that uh, the main cause of wars, a quote again, is ignorance of each other's ways and lives. These statements were opposed by the Yugoslavian representative as lacking material and scientific knowledge. Uh, the direct framework of the debate was therefore not a theoretical difference in the approaches towards should I say, but a conflict between UNESCO's understanding of historical occurrences and the so-called economic determinism uh, of an ideology which served as the foundation of the Soviet Union uh, in, in very uh, broad terms. This conflict represents opposing worldviews symbolizing contemporary world power structures. Thus the debate is, uh, while theoretical, explicitly a debate on theories that have crucial practical consequences affecting the future of a society after the end of World War II uh, in Japan. So this is, uh, this is what I would like to stress about the, uh, the, the theoretical uh, approach here, or the non-theoretical approach. It is important to note that while the should I say debate is usually referred to as a debate on the place of idealistic views within Marxist historical theory in Japan. The well-known simplification of conflicting poles here does not contrast idealism with materialism, as usually symbolized by Hegel and Marx, but puts historical materialism against a subjectivistic approach represented by Freud, referring to the minds of men as a sphere where wars can start. Obviously, the question of whether a war can actually start in the minds of men and how this interpretation relates to historical materialism was crucial to Japanese intellectuals of the post-war era. Sorry. Yes. Maruyama's first comment clearly reflects his position in the sense that he makes no attempt to take any of the symbolic sides regarding the matter. He mentions that the original mission of UNESCO was not political, thus the constitution can hardly be interpreted in political terms. However, he continues, if one does not stick too heavily to words, the statement wars begin in the minds of men does not deny material causes in the background of historical occurrences. It simply means that these causes lead to a war when they have an effect within the minds of people. 
Most importantly, he adds a little later, Marshall does not argue for one of the sides, but stresses based on the UNESCO constitution that it is ignorance of each other that is to be eliminated. The approach of not preferring one side to another, arguing that such choices rather hinder that, than facilitate understanding, appears at the beginning of the lecture series in intellectual history that Mariama gave in the same year, 1948, where he says that the investigation of the substructure, Unterbau, does not need to replace intellectual history. And in the same way as in his lecture, in the Roundtable 2, Mariama argues that any either-or approach to this question fails to reach the heart of the matter. After uh, after views on UNESCO have been exchanged, the discussion starts to focus on the relationship between science and worldviews, to be understood, as Kirsten stresses, as a relationship between the understanding of history as influenced by deterministic forces and an idealistic interpretation. At a certain point, the participants reach the question of partisanship, tohaseik, and the argument that shutaise is to be found in the mind or mentality, shinri, of the community that is in class consciousness. Here, Maruyama formulates the following critique. In the partisanship of class society, he says, there appears an unchanging entity. I quote, what difference is there at all between class partisanship and the rules of general material social existence? End of quote. This, he adds, is not yet the point to start looking for, should I say. Hayashi responds that partisanship designates a special step precisely because it separates mere existence from putting into practice, from action, jisen. Maruyama, however, goes on with his opposition, asking whether the class consciousness, kaikyu ishiki, in question, is an existing class consciousness, aru kaikyu ishiki. And then Mashita inquires about the meaning of this aru. Maruyama explains as follows, and this you can see on the slide. Quote, in the sense that it exists in the present, genni aruimi. It is consciousness as dasein. It is usually said that consciousness can be high or low, but when that is said, this should mean the anticipation of something that has a certain kind of value, and that existing consciousness is in contrast with consciousness that consciousness that should exist. Arubeki Ishiki. Therefore, I think that there are already values presupposed in this way of speaking. So if someone considers it is necessary to bring to light the value consciousness generally presupposed by Marxism, and if Marxism is hard to accept due to a certain kind of coldness, indifference, sumetaimono, that one feels in it, and I think this is so in the case of many people, that is because this value consciousness is not developed, not brought to light. End of quote. When we are talking about difference between high and low, we refer to a difference of values. One cannot talk about, should I say, in the sense of Zain, Aruishiki, that is, in the mere appearance of class consciousness itself. A prerequisite of should I say is the Zolan, Arubeki Ishiki, that is the recognition of the difference between the value of the present situation and one that should be reached being of higher value. Only action aimed at the progression from the former to the latter, from lower to higher, can be considered the action of should I say. In terms of historical interpretation, on the other hand, it is meaningless to talk about value-based actions that are already predetermined in any sense. This standpoint becomes clear from a somewhat later exchange between Maruyama and Kozai when, Mar when Matsumura defines high consciousness as a higher outlook, moto takai shia, of the proletariat. Maruyama says, you say higher outlook, what does high refer to in that case? Kozai says high refers to what is more developed, nearer to a solution in the practical conduct of the proletariat in its struggle. Maruyama, but this putting into practice, this action, jisen, happen in the end by the self-awareness, chikaku, of the proletariat, that is by the revolution of their consciousness. If these are not considered, there is no action. That is true. If so, what is this revolution of consciousness? Isn't there already a consciousness of values if we say it is a consciousness suitable for the proletariat or nearer to a solution? This is not a mere change, henka of consciousness, but progression, Shinka. End of quote. Not mere change, but progression. That distinguishes for Maruyama simple occurrences from a history driven by value-based actions. As an example of his understanding, he refers to the United States and the will of the people, 
that would represent that progression, but that is devalued by Marxist reflection theory, saying that it is still not what is required, thus it is not considered that to be as the will of the people at all. Matsumura responds that this is because of the contemporary state of affairs, that is, the lack of the degree of consciousness that would be able to generate actual rev revolution. To that, Maruyama replies again that it is precisely this distinction, the distinction between the current state and the historical mission that must actually be willed, that he calls value. I quote again, since values are not something that just float in the air, separate from history, end of quote. One can, he adds, also say ideals instead of values. Ideas for which one is ready, I quote again, to throw away one's own tranquil well-being. This value, this ideal, can only be found in action, action that makes us human. If the purpose was individual well-being, then, I quote, one could stop at the farmer with five, ten of land, having sufficient resources for his own existence. I think, Mariama says, the historical mission of socialism lies in the sublation, shio, of the external circumstances that hinder the, the emancipation of humanness, Nyingensei. And about this, and here, uh, Miyagi interrupts and asks Maruyama whether this Nyingensei is something predetermined within man. And Maruyama responds as follows, and this response to the interruption might be one of his most interesting comments. Uh, this is on the slide. If the reality of the internal self, Naimen Tekijiga, is meant, I refer to that. Human life that does not stop at simply securing one's animal-like being, internal and, in the end, spiritual values, spiritual things that make a human being a human being, being worth to be human, that is distinct from animal-like being or physiological being, I speak of humanness in this sense. When it is suggested that this understanding of values would resemble a neo-Kantian value orientation, he explicitly rejects the idea, saying, values as I talk about them have nothing to do with the neo-Kantian interpretation of transcendent values separated from human beings. In short, they are the ethos we must necessarily anticipate when we act. Marxists also anticipate that in an unconscious way." End of quote. In the final part of the debate, Maruyama refers to this ethos again, when Shimizu says that physiological, uh, so, sorry, uh, psychological interpretations can also find their place in the understanding of history, and Miyagi concludes that as Marx and Freud, Maruyama adds, we should rather say Marx and Freud and ethos. But as a conclusion, uh, although uh, in this brief discussion I could not analyze in detail the different arguments of the representatives of Marxist schools, uh, it may have become clear from Mariama's responses that it was not by no means the original interpretation of Marx and Engels that he rejected, but rather contemporary simplifications of Marxism, that being lost in quite rigid categories, lose sight of actual individuals and societies. Regarding the distinction, for example, of animals and, and humans, Mariama refers to Engels' anti-during. Uh, it is thus neither Hegel nor Freud, but Engels that he uh, cites. Uh, in the debate with contemporary Japanese Marxist theory. Another important aspect of the debate in terms of Mariyama's thought is how his responses reflect his logic of uh, what I call uh, not in spite but because of approach uh, to the understanding of societal change. It is not in spite of but because of the separation of public and private by Ogyu Sorai that Motori Norinaga unified these fears in the way he did. It is not in spite of, but because of the tragic end of World War II that the Japanese could and should start looking for responsible, autonomous action, that is, should I say, in their society, as Maruyama saw it. And it is not in spite of, but because of the need for overwhelming uh, societal change that we cannot place, should I say, in mere consciousness, but only in action based on value consciousness, driven by a certain kind of ethos that goes beyond individual well-being. If consciousness is consciousness of values ordered to different stages of existence, then should I say is defined by actions carried out with the purpose of progressing from one stage towards the next, towards, and I quote again, the sublation, shio, of circumstances that hinder the emancipation of humanness, or as Maruyama says in the above mentioned lecture, the sublation of civil society, the aufhebung of civil society. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Taco, for that wonderful uh, paper uh, presentation. And now I'd like to see if we have some uh, comments or questions, and maybe if we could also see from the Zoom side as well. Um, any thoughts from people? Um, I think I can also check. So for the Zoom audience, just raise that, raise your hand. Please, Raquel. Yes, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was also thinking whether uh, it is possible at all to, uh, to talk about this discussion without uh, presenting the, uh, the different positions. Um, I think what is, uh, what is at stake here uh, from, from the perspective of, of contemporary Marxist schools was uh, how they can deal with, um, uh, with the challenge of, of the time that uh, that made it absolutely clear to everyone uh, that a very simplifying approach to history that would that would say uh, it is decided by economic factors that people cannot um, influence in any way is absolutely insufficient. And the different schools are trying to to find the. the the good approach to uh, to find so, so to to find that additional explanation that is I mean in addition to this uh, economic explanation that is of course um, a simplification of of the original ideas of Marx, for example, and um, and some of them uh, are approaching the question from what what is usually called uh, scientific Marxism, uh, which, which, are, which is represented here by, by uh, social scientists, uh, basically, who would try to, uh, try to speak in scientific terms, uh, why there are those who, uh, who, who, who think uh, this brings the whole question too near to, to idealism. On the other hand, there are, uh, there are those who try to represent Orthodox Marxist views, but of course, Orthodox Marxism uh, is again not uh, the interpretation of Marx himself. You know, as as Marx uh, himself said, if these people are Marxists, then I'm not. So, um, so, so it is is really, and and I and I I, I was really um, so I think it was a very interesting question by Professor Steinek. But, what what happens to the Marxists, and and I think we could also approach this problem from an aspect whether they were there at all so whether because so they were not there before then these people became marxists for some time and then again they were not marxists anymore after a, after a while um but i think this is not so i i don't think it is a problem uh if they define themselves as as marxists in any sense and and you know this discussion and i and i must also confess that there are points of this discussion uh, where uh, where you must dig very deep because they were very very well of of texts, you know. For example, they are they are referring to Mariama's analysis of of Lasky, and and it and it it is very clear from the discussion that uh, they quote Lasky by heart, and and they are very very deeply um, uh, read uh, in these texts, and at some points. Uh, it is really not easy to uh, to to find. The, so you, you can find the references in terms of texts, but uh, but the references of the Japanese um, circumstances of the time, in connection to Lasky, in connection to Engels, in connection to uh, all these uh, all these struggles, is a is a large web of uh, approaches, and these labels. Uh, and and also the label of Marxism. 
seem to make it easier, but actually make it less easy to uh, to understand because because these just cover uh, the approaches and, and the same way as as Maria was labeled as a modernist because it, it, it doesn't so it, it doesn't seem to so Mariama's argumentation here is is not for any kind of modernist it's not so he's not, he, he's not waving the flag of modernism he is just trying to um to separate things that are mixed a little bit because this whole uh, Freud and Marx at UNESCO uh, issue is is a large confusion of ideologies and ideas and uh, and basically uh, basically it is a mixture of politics and philosophy which is just which is just something you cannot uh, professionally talk about philosophically because it is driven by ideologies so you, you cannot you cannot you, you cannot base a debate on should I say on a on 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 the opinion of um of a diplomat uh, at a at a political or um, yeah poly policy conference of UNESCO so it is it is it is a, it's a different thing and um, and I think they they were they were very serious and sorry I, I finish in a second uh, they were very serious in the sense that uh, they were not theoreticians of 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 this whole question but but we're looking for the the real answer that produces change in society but not uh but not politically yeah i i, I don't know whether this this, this is not an answer to your question but but <laughs> but a continuation of of some some thoughts yeah. thank you um, and then um, other other questions, thoughts, anyone from here? Um, also uh, from the Zoom audience, do I see any? Please. Yes, please. Uh, th 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 this is always a very important question, and thank you very much uh, for it. I um, I would say that in my case, uh, it has also a special relevance because of. But I I, I really was not uh, I did not want to talk about Weber, but uh, but in my case, it is also very relevant because I'm I'm looking for the. Uh, the reflections of Maruyama to Max Weber, uh, and and all the time he is talking about ethos. You you cannot help thinking uh, that the Protestant ethic line of thought is is there in the background. While Maruyama always says that oh I I I know Weber, but it's nothing special, no special relationship, and still. Um, in, in many ways, uh, he, he is much similar. While, of course, he was not a Weberian, and, and there were some uh, at the time who were, but uh, but still there are these links. And, um, and also because uh, I think it is, it is very important to see how Mariama was, was making efforts to, uh, to make it consciously uh, make it visible to a society why certain historical um, occurrences occurred, and I think it is relevant in any can can be relevant in any time of history that a thinker takes the responsibility of holding the mirror to society in some way. But but only in a symbolic way. If, if you are, if if you are, if you mean that, maybe no direct relevance. Yeah. But thank you for the question. Okay, and then I think we have time. Maybe for if there's any final last comment or question, 
we just have a minute or two. Uh, and if not, that's okay as well. Um, but I, did, I do want to give a little space in, in case something has occurred to anyone. Any final, final thoughts? Please, Rajan. Uh, of of course, I should develop this idea a bit further, but uh, but but basically, this is what I meant because because they are very rarely uh, referring to Marx. They are they are going back until Engels sometimes, but that is also basically Maruyama who is criticizing the others who are talking about much more contemporary uh, figures and. Um, and they are using these labels, so they are mentioning, um, you know, scientific Marxism. Uh, should I say is, is also used in different ways, but they absolutely don't give a definition to it. They 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 don't try it, but they use it different ways. And uh, and I sometimes I have the impression that they think it is somewhat necessary to use these labels because they are they are doing conscious philosophy and they and they or, or not philosophy but uh, conscious intellectual debate and and they have a, a scale of these labels and and pick one thank you very much thank you, thank you.